Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at nitrogen and its compounds and specifically we are going to be looking at ammonia and the ABBA process. So this is the large scale preparation of ammonia. Previously we talked about the laboratory preparation. So we will look at details of the large scale preparation. So let's begin. Uh, so ammonia uh, is usually manufactured um, in a process called uh, the ABBA process. It was discovered by someone called Haba. So most of the world supply of ammonia, that is the synthesis of nitrogen and hydrogen, is in the ABBA process. So this process is very important because it produces most of the ammonia that is used in the world. So some of the raw materials uh, for this process are nitrogen, which is obtained from liquid air fractional distillation. So we talked about the fractional distillation of liquefied air when we were starting on nitrogen and its compounds. And we saw how those components were separated uh, when uh, they are liquefied. And we also said that nitrogen is one of the components that is separated first. So another raw material is hydrogen. Hydrogen is obtained um, from water gas in Bosch process, and it's also obtained from cracking of crude oil, that is long chain alkanes. So the nitrogen and hydrogen is usually combined in the ratio of one is to three. As you can see from the formula of ammonia, which is NH3, that tells you for every three atoms of hydrogen, it's combining with an atom of nitrogen. So to form two volumes of ammonia gas plus heat, the reaction is very exothermic, so it releases heat to the surrounding. This property of it being exothermic is going to determine some of the pressure and temperatures that are going to be used in the large scale process. So you can see this is a general equation. Um, uh, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia, and then also heat is given out. So other conditions uh, for this reaction, these are some of the things that are easily like tested. The conditions are high pressures. So the, the process is usually favored with high pressures, and thus uh, approximate pressure of 200 to 300 atmospheres is used. Some books will mention just 200 atmospheres, so that is still okay. The volume of gas, gaseous reactants from equation is higher than the volume gaseous product. So thus, increased pressure will shift the equilibrium to the right, favoring the production of more ammonia. So high pressures are usually, uh, they're usually the best option, although they are very expensive to obtain. So we'll talk about the equilibrium later on in rates of reaction in form 4 and we'll look at this process once more in detail and see how increase in temperature would favor the reaction uh, of the production of ammonia. But as you can see, we do not use it because of how expensive these uh, pressures would be. So it's also very favorable under low temperature. So the reason why it's, it's favorable under low temperature is because, as we said earlier, this reaction is exothermic. There's a lot of heat that is being released into the surrounding. So having low temperatures would help the forward reaction to occur. So we will talk about this as well and how the equilibrium shifts depending on if the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. But now the low uh, temperatures also have a disadvantage because the reaction would be too slow. So that is the reason why there is an introduction of catalyst. So the low temperatures makes the reaction slow. So a catalyst is used, which usually increases the surface area for the reaction. So the catalyst used for this reaction is finely divided iron. And you can see it's finely divided to increase the surface area for the reaction. It's intentional on how fine it is. So this is the process. Let's look at the process in detail. So you can see there's fractional distillation of air, uh, and then this is where nitrogen comes from, and then there is also cracking of alkane where hydrogen comes from. It passes through the purifier, and then again through the compressor, and then it goes to a heat exchanger, 
and then goes to the catalytic chamber, then goes back again to the heat exchanger and then condenser, where, and then the unreacting gases are taken back to the compressor, and then uh, after the condenser, there's the liquid ammonia. So let's look in details in each section. So the first part you saw from the diagram is the purification stage. So this is where now the nitrogen and the hydrogen is passed through a chamber where impurities are removed. Some of the main impurities are like carbon dioxide, like water, vapor, there is dust particles, sulfur dioxide, and oxygen. And you notice some of these impurities are all coming from air. Remember, nitrogen is um, coming from distillation of air, so we know some of these impurities are carried from there. And then the reason why these impurities are removed is to avoid poisoning the catalyst. It's easily poisoned by these um, impurities. In the second stage, you see it's the compression after it's moved from the purifier. So the nitrogen and hydrogen are usually compressed in a comp compressor at um, 500 uh, atmospheres. We see it's a range between 200 and 300 because high pressures as well are very expensive. So the reason why it is compressed at these atmospheres is to increase the chances of molecules reacting. So because the particles are being brought closer to each other, it means the rate of collision will be very high. And if the rate of collision is high, it means the particles will react more to increase the pressure and hence increase the concentration of the reacting particles. So and the next stage after it moves from the compressor, it's taken to the heat exchanger. At the heat exchanger, um, the heat exchanger increases the temperature of the reactant mixture. So they are heated. Uh, there's an increase in temperature. We made we said it works better in some optimum uh, temperatures, which in this case is 400 degrees Celsius or 450 in some books. So this enables the reactant to obtain the optimum temperature for succeeding in the reaction. So basically, after it moves from the heat exchanger, it has already achieved it's um, achieving that optimum temperature and then it's taken to the catalytic chamber. These gases are taken there. Remember, they have not reacted yet. So when they go to the catalytic chamber, that is where they combine and they combine in a ratio of 1 is to 3 to form ammonia. So the reaction at the catalyst is sped up. Remember, the presence of the catalyst itself is a substance that speeds up the reaction. So there is formation of ammonia. And then the catalyst is usually made up of finely divided iron impregnated with aluminium oxide. Um, and then this is the reaction now that occurs. So you can see as nitrogen and hydrogen is reacting, remember also there is more heat that is being released. So the, the amount of heat in the catalytic chamber keeps on going up. So we need to take back the reactions into the heat exchanger. So due to the high heat above, the products are taken back to the heat exchanger to cool the gases coming from the catalytic changer, chamber. So the heat exchanger has two functions. It is used to heat the reactants and then it's also used to cool the products. So when it goes to the heat exchanger, um, they usually cool, they are cooled to reduce the cost of condensation. They are going to be condensed eventually, but at least cooling them prior before going to the condensation chamber allows reduction of cost because it's still like costly to cool. Uh, so the gaseous mixture and ammonia, which is and, and combined nitrogen gas, are passed through the condenser, and then when condensation occurs, it occurs at very low temperatures and then it changes the ammonia into a liquid. And then the ones that have not combined are taken back into the compressor to begin the process again. So for us to be able to get a, a, a optimum like place to place this plant, some considerations are usually put in place. And one of the considerations is, first of all, the availability of raw materials. So it means that natural gas needs to be available and crude well. So it means like a place where uh, nitrogen gas can be easily be accessible 
where fractional distillation of liquefied air takes place and also cracking of alkanes takes place. The, the, the plant needs to be near those regions. And then also presence of cheap sources of energy. As you can see, the temperatures and pressures are usually very, use a lot of energy to just maintain them. That's why it's very, very expensive. So just having a good source of energy is important. And then availability of transport and marketing so that, of course, the ammonia itself can be used up um, and the products can be sold quickly. Availability of appropriate technology and labor, labor, labor force is also important because you see some of these reactions and machinery that is used in the process, it's required, especially when it comes to the heat exchanger and the cooling. It requires very technical um, uh, machinery. So let's look at a question. The flowchart below shows the harbor process in the large scale manufacture of ammonia gas. Use it to answer the questions that follow. Describe how nitrogen gas is obtained from air on a large scale. So if you remember what we said, air is basically you are being asked to explain fractional distillation of air. So we remember that air is obtained and passed through uh, filters. Uh, so these filters undergo filtration and also electrostatic precipitation to remove dust particles. And then the air is passed through sodium hydroxide or concentrated potassium hydroxide to remove carbon dioxide gas. And then this air is passed through a chamber where it's cooled to negative 25 degrees Celsius. So when it's cooled to negative 25 degrees Celsius, the water changes into ice, the moisture, and also some of the carbon dioxide also change into ice. And then it's taken to the liquefaction where it is compressed and then expanded. It's compressed at 200 atmospheres and heated at 200 degrees Celsius. So that continuous compression and expansion causes the gas, the mixture, to turn to a liquid and then it's fed into the fractionating column. This is where it's heated slowly and the ones that have low um, boiling point, for example, nitrogen has the lowest, is going to distill off fast as a gas which cools down later and is collected. And then it's followed by argon and then finally oxygen is collected next. So basically that's the question I've been told to explain uh, from what we discussed earlier on. Name one source of hydrogen used as a raw material in the above process. So we say there is the cracking of long chain alkanes. And there's also another process we didn't mention, which was the electrolysis of water. Electrolysis of water as well produces hydrogen. Name chamber A. So we said um, it's it taken to the purifier. Chamber A, that is before the catalytic chamber, is the heat exchanger. And then write an equation for the reaction taking place in the catalytic chamber. So this is where nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia. So let's balance this equation. And then in the harbor process, optimum temperatures of 500 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. and atmospheres of 200 degrees atmospheres are used to get optimum mm -hmm. yield. Of ammonia, why can't lower temperatures and higher pressures be used? Uh, this is because we know um, low temperatures, uh, the reaction is going to be low. So this lowers the reaction. And then higher pressures are expensive to obtain.
So we want to have optimum temperatures, not too low temperatures such that the reaction is not going to occur as fast as you want and not so high pressures which are so expensive to obtain. So that's the reason why we use a catalyst instead. Give two reasons why finely divided iron is the co commonly used. First of all, it's very cheap and available. You know that iron is one of the most abundant gases, uh, metals that is. And then another reason is it increases uh, surface area uh, for reaction. So the fact that it is finely divided and not just iron metal, we have been told it has, it has been ground. So it means that that helps it to um, the reaction to occur faster on it. So it increases that surface area for reaction. So that brings us to the end of the question. Uh, so next we are going to look at other properties of ammonia. Basically, it's one of the uses of ammonia, which is to make fertilizers. And then you're going to look at which is the best fertilizer to use. So see you in the next lesson.